All right, hi everybody. Today we are gonna be dipping our toes into the water of chrome type design. Uh, we are gonna be creating this today. All right, and to be getting started, one really important thing is to have some references. So I just made a Pinterest board real quick with some very basic stuff on it of what we're gonna be going for. Uh, we're starting with some simple chrome type stuff, which is just gonna be more uh, patternization and abstract work. Um, as you can see on this first one, a lot of it is based around words and fonts. Um, I will be going into that in the near future, but we're just gonna start with something more simple, like an abstract design. Uh, for this to work, you're gonna be needing a vectorization program. I am going to be using Adobe Illustrator, but there is a free one online you can use called Inkscape. I used to use this one before I bought the Adobe Illustrator. Um, and after the vectorization program, we're gonna be using Blender. And then you don't necessarily need Photoshop or a program after that, but I might be doing some touch-up work afterwards in Photoshop. So let's get started today by pulling up Illustrator. All right, now that we have Illustrator open, we're just gonna make a new file. It doesn't really matter the size. I have two artboards on. I'm just gonna delete one artboard real quick just so that it's simpler looking. Uh, this is not gonna be a tutorial for basic beginner stuff in Illustrator. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, uh, look up a tutorial on how to use the pen tool. So one important thing to do when you're drawing this up is to have your references easily seen. So I have two monitors, so I'm just gonna drag this over onto my second monitor so that I can have my images open while I'm doing this. And we're just gonna get the pen tool and just start drawing. All right, so when you're using the pen tool, you just wanna make like pokey and fluid shapes and make sure it has very interesting and simple geometry. Uh, an important thing is it has to connect, then make it a solid color with no stroke, go back and make it smooth. And you can add holes and divots by going back and drawing them and then selecting Shape Builder and holding down uh, either Alt or Shift and then deleting them to get the negative space. And then once you get all the negative space, just export it as a SVG. All right, now that we're in Blender, we're gonna be doing this. File, I'll start with a blank scene, delete everything, and then go File, Import, SVG, and then just select where you saved it. Once it imports it, it'll be up here under Curve. Oh, you can't see it because that's in the way. It'll be up here under Curve, so just click on that. Then do S9 to scale it up nine times. Rotate it on the X90. We're gonna right click on it, or click off it, click on it. And then we're gonna set the origin to the geometry. We're just gonna size it up and get this in the middle just so we can get an idea. Cool, and now we have that in there. We're just gonna delete the base material. I think it looks better to work on it when it's white. And we're gonna go down here, add a modifier, and we're gonna solidify it. Let's go to the side, hit three, so we can see the depth of it. And we're just gonna make the thickness a little more. Cool, now we got it looking pretty nice. We're gonna go up here and just object convert to mesh. All right, now that we have it converted to mesh, we're gonna be doing sculpting. The important thing to do first is if you look at this mesh, the mesh is absolutely disgusting. And that is because it's turning an SVG into a mesh and it's trying to figure out how to quad it up and it just doesn't work. So the first thing we're going to do over here is we're just going to apply a remesh. We're going to have it under voxel and we're just going to change the voxel size to 0.01. You can already see it's starting to shape up and then just up here we're just going to divide it by 2 until we get the desired shape. This is looking pretty good. You can see down here on the end it gets really thin, but I don't really want to make the geometry any thinner than it needs to be, so I'll just deal with that. 
And after we have the remesh, we're just gonna apply the remesh. And then if you go and look, you can see the mesh is a lot better now. Cool. Now that we have it meshed out correctly, we're gonna go into sculpting mode. And then we're gonna apply a multi-resolution modifier and just click on subdivide. Also keep in mind while you're doing this, I have a 3090 in my computer, so I can handle a lot of subdivisions. If your computer can't handle as many subdivisions, just turn it up in the render and leave the sculpt and the live viewport down. All right, now that we have this selected, we're gonna turn on enable symmetry on the, is it the Z axis? Or the Y axis, that way. Actually, Symmetry doesn't seem to be working on this one. Sometimes symmetry works, so we're just gonna leave symmetry off on this. And we're just gonna have to do it by hand. So ha having any tool selected, if you hold down shift, it's smooth, and then you can just smooth down the edges on everything. Make everything nice and smooth. I'm going to be fast forwarding through this part and through these parts of the sculpting that take a while, just because they take a while. So I'll be back once I'm done smoothing it out. So when you're doing this, it's important just to hold down shift and uh, try not to zoom in too much. And if you zoom in, you can control the size of your brush by using the bracket keys on your keyboard. And uh, yeah, just smooth the whole thing down basically. All right, now I have the whole first side smoothed out. As you can see, the back side is still completely rough. This isn't necessarily important unless you're doing an animation where you're gonna be seeing the other side or if you wanna catch different beams on the top. Feel free to smooth everything out as much as you want. This process just takes a while and sometimes it's a lot of work. So I'm going to continue smoothing and just get it shaped a little better. Uh, do this with your shape as much as you want and then join me on the next step. Alright, and it is smoothed out to my liking for step one, so we're going to jump back into layout mode, or live viewport mode, and then down here on the multi-res, make sure you turn the level viewport up to the same amount of subdivision you have the sculpt at, otherwise you're not going to be seeing the results you had. And then if you look, you can see on the corners right here, we got some mesh that is uh, floating, so we're just going to go into edit mode, select the mesh, control L to select all it. And then just delete the vertexes on the floating mesh. Switch back to object mode. And we're getting this so far. So let's hop into shading just so we can see what we have so far. We're just gonna switch over here to world. Add an environment texture. Uh, we're, we're doing this in cycles, by the way, not EV, so we're going to be using HDRIs. I have the plugin Blender Kit up here. Uh, if you click on this, it just allows you to search HDRIs off of websites that provide free HDRIs. You can either do that or just use one to your liking. I'm just going to use this uh, cloud one. I like the reflections on it a lot. I find it looks very nice. So switch to the cloud one. And then over here, Underneath the render properties, we're gonna go down to film and we're just gonna check off transparency. That way that we don't get to see the background. Cool. And now just apply a texturing node to this just so that we can rotate it. And then go back to layout mode and we're just gonna add a plane, size it up and just add it as a background right now, just so we can see what we got so far. Switch back. Cool. We're going to move the plane back a little bit just so uh, we don't get shadow in the camera. And then we're going to add a material to our curve. And what we're going to do is we're just going to draw the roughness down and the metallic up. And right now we're already getting the basics of what we're wanting to. Make sure you shade it smooth, that way it looks nice. And as you can see when we rotate this, 
we're getting the basics of chrome type. What you're getting on your reflection is all dependent on what you are using for your background and lighting. So if we don't want to see the clouds, we can go up here to shading and just disconnect the world output. And then just add like a sun. Just turn it up to like 20. And then just rotate the sun and stuff around until you get this looking how you want to look. I personally prefer the look of an HDRI. So I'm gonna go back and plug the HDRI back in. I don't know if I necessarily like this HDRI. I might wanna use one that I already have downloaded. But I might just use one of the ones they have up here. I like that one. I just wish it was a little brighter. So maybe let's select this one. Cool, now once this updates, you can see, just turn the roughness down, mess around with this, we're getting a very nice reflection. All right, so now is where you are going to be doing even more sculpting. To get the chrome type look, it is effectively just as much sculpting and customization as you want to put into it. So I'm going to be going through over here and using different sculpting tools, including the draw sharp, the clay, the inflate, the blob, the grab, the snake hook, and the thumb, and just doing some more customizations on this. I'm going to be fast forwarding this part because this part normally takes a while. Um, so yeah, have fun with this, go to town, there's no rules back when I'm done doing this. Uh, let's move this back over here so you can see better. And uh, let's do this. All right, I'm gonna call that good on this one. Normally I go a lot more intense, but you can see how you can spend hours and hours and hours on this. So now that we got this, let's just switch back to layout mode and see what we got looking so far. Should be looking pretty cool. Yep, looking pretty cool. All right, up here we're gonna switch it to local and we're just gonna mess around with the sizing on the Y. Is the Y or the Z a little bit just to make it a smidge thinner. And we're gonna size this. Cool, now that we got this, we're gonna go over here into our settings, our output properties, and we're gonna change it to 1080 by 1350. This gives us a nice poster looking thing for Instagram sort of sized layouts. And we're gonna size this down. I'm gonna control A on this and apply scale. And then we're gonna shift A, add an empty plane access. Just gonna move this over to the side a little bit. Make sure you switch back to global. And over here, we're gonna mirror it. We're gonna change the mirror to the empty. And now we just need to size this correctly. We're gonna switch back to this to just clay view while we're doing this, because sometimes it uh, gets a little laggy. You can also turn off multi-res while you're messing around with the location, just because it gets a little laggy when you have a uh, lot of geometry going on. We're just gonna get this positioned how we want it. Just by rotating it and moving it around. Again, there are no rules for how this needs to be laid out. Whatever you think looks cool, looks cool. All right, I like the way that looks. Let's turn multi-res back on just to see how this looks. For some reason it's looking really gross. Maybe if I put that before that. 
Try and smooth it. this 180 so we can see the other side get the smoother side cool now that we got this sort of base shape let's switch back to this view we're just gonna duplicate it by hitting alt D we're gonna size it around a little bit down here we're gonna turn the multi res off just so we can move it easier again and we're going to make it a single user. Move it around, rotate it how you want. Get it positioned. And then we're going to take the camera and we're just going to zoom out a little bit with the camera. Right now, we got this, which is looking pretty cool so far. I think I might mess around with the lighting and change everything completely, but now we have this layout, so I will call this the end of one tutorial. On the next tutorial, we will go into the materials, the composition, and the final rendering. See you there.